encourage the people by giving some examples. I loved in your book where you said there are some great examples of Christians, godly people that had doubts in their life. Oh, absolutely. Well, just go back to the Bible. Job is the best case. We don't read those 30-some silent chapters in Job. Job says some very strong things. At one point, to paraphrase, he says to God, get out of my face so I can have a moment's rest. We expect Job to say that, but how about great heroes of the faith? If I said, who's the man of faith? I'd say, Abraham. But talk about struggles. He's told not to take uh, family, others with him. He takes a lot. He asks in chapter 15, Genesis, how do I know this is true? Twice he lies about Sarah. Once we're told he lied because he's afraid his life was going to be taken. But wait a minute, Abraham. If God gave you this promise, you don't have a son yet. This isn't, you know, nothing's happened yet, but he's questioning. My favorite one is Genesis 17, where God says to him, you're going to be a father of many nations. He falls down on the ground laughing. This is the man of faith. How about David, the man after God's own heart? And we don't have to tell people his, his foibles are very well known, but we've got many things in David's life that keep him from being on top of things, and he cries out, restoring to me the joy of my salvation. But David's a man after God's own heart. You've got John in the New Testament. John the Baptist, he's in prison. He sends his two disciples to Jesus, and they say two questions, Luke 7. Are you the Messiah, or should we look for another? Now, the first question was bad enough. Are you really him? But uh, there's this guy down the street, and his name's Krishna. I mean, no offense, I'm just wondering. And Jesus says to the disciples, he doesn't say, hey, you can tell John to go jump in the lake. He says, go tell John the things I'm doing. And right there on the spot, he's healing, he's raising, he's touching, and people are getting healed. And as the disciples of John walk away, Jesus said to the people, hey, what do you expect when you went out there in the wilderness to see this guy? Some kind of country bumpkin? No, I'm telling you, he's the greatest man ever born. Now, that's incredible. Doubting John, because the disciples haven't gotten back to him yet, doubting John is the greatest man ever born. Paul's thorn in the flesh. Uh, over and over again, Jeremiah, we call him the weeping prophet. You know, today I think we call him the depressed prophet. I mean, this man's suffering, lamentations. Uh, why are you doing all this stuff? The book of Psalms. The Bible is filled with patches like this. People say, well, I haven't heard this before. It doesn't preach. But I think it does preach. I think those passages say we're humans, we're finite. Number two, we're sinful. That's why we doubt. That's the first thing.